Hey there, hope you are doing well. I've got some important news for you about the current state of the economy. Are we facing a lost decade like Japan now? I'm trying to use a bit more easygoing speech this time to show a bit more of a human side. Please let me know in the comments if you hate it or if I should continue with this a little bit more colorful language. Okay, so let's dive into this. Usually the S&P 500 index goes up by around 10% each year, right? But in 2022, it went down by a hopping 20%, but most likely that is just the beginning of a wider crash that would also impact the other less tech-related indices. Same situation with real estate. Normally, it increases by around 2-3% to annually across the United States, but lately it's been going down at an annualized rate of negative 15%, and some markets like California or New York are falling through the floor. Look, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the reality is that investing is going in the wrong direction right now, and people are losing money left and right. And while many people seem to have this sense of optimism that things will get better because they always have in the past, I'm here to tell you that we might be in for a bit of a rough ride. In fact, there's a distinct possibility that things may not get better at all. Stocks should continue to fall, yields will stay up, maybe even rising a bit more, and the housing market could continue to crash not just in the next few months, but for years to come. I know, I know, it's not what anyone wants to hear, but the truth is that we might be headed towards a lost decade, which is a period of economic stagnation or decline that can last for a long time. And we've seen it happen before in history, my friends. It's not a pretty sight. The fact of the matter is that our economies are on the brink, things are not going well, and the next 10 years might see things get worse, not better. Now, before we get into the nitty-gritty of what the lost decade is and what it might look like, we need to talk about why I think it's so likely. And it all comes down to our banking systems and the ridiculous levels of debt that are hanging over our countries. When it comes to debt bubbles, there are two major issues that we simply can't ignore. The Bank for International Settlements, BIS, is a financial institution that you might not have heard of, but you really should have. It's basically the central bank for central banks, and not just in the Western world, but in every corner of the globe, we're talking the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, the Russian Central Bank, and even the People's Bank of China, among others. All in all, these central banks oversee pretty much all of the world's countries. So why am I bringing up the BIS? Because they recently released a report about payment obligations arising from FX swaps, forwards, and currency swaps which are staggering. Considering all currencies, Outstanding amounts reached $97 trillion. That is huge. And the nasty thing is that these $97 trillion are currently more or less hidden from the public eye because companies aren't required to report it on their balance sheets. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this is a disaster waiting to happen. These outstanding obligations, or in other words debt, is real and as interest rates continue to rise, this burden is only going to get larger. Mainly the big international corporations and banks should be affected by this. But that's not the only problem we're facing. There's also a growing crisis in the auto loan market. We all know that the car market was in a bubble and prices have been falling for months. But what most people don't realize is that while prices fall, the total amount of auto loan debt is skyrocketing for a very sinister reason. People are already underwater on their car loans, meaning the debt is worth more than the vehicle itself. And that means when people try to sell their cars, they'll still have a loan to pay off. Normally, no bank would give someone a second car loan when they're already underwater with the first one. But that's apparently not the case at the moment. Similar to the great financial crisis, car loan companies have just sold and repackaged their outstanding debt, and as the issuing institutions no longer have the risk in their own books, the landing standards have been weakened significantly leading to this reckless behavior and a huge number of subprime loans which have a high risk of never being repaid. So there you have it folks, that is another huge bubble to pop. The BIS debt bubble and the auto loan crisis are just two of the many issues facing our economy right now, and I'm not here to sugarcoat it. It's time we faced the facts and took action to protect ourselves from what could be a very rough road ahead. But it's not just the automotive industry that's in trouble. We've also got a ridiculous amount of credit card debt that's been building up over the years, and with interest rates on the rise, it's becoming more and more of a problem. We're getting closer and closer to the point of collapse, and it's not just the average person who's feeling the effects. Even college-educated young people with high-paying jobs are struggling to make ends meet. And with the recent layoffs, it's clear that a financial storm is brewing, and no one is safe. As Michael Burry puts it, it is just an everything bubble that is in the process of popping and that encompass the entire economy from government debt to corporate debt, including consumers' debt like car loans, mortgages, and credit card debt. 
But let's face it, we all know why the markets are in trouble right now. It's shaping up for 2023 to be another year of lost wealth, following the declines of 2022. But it is also a tough time for the labor market, with Powell trying to bring it to a halt, and even Goldman Sachs is warning clients about where the market is heading. It's no wonder that many people are feeling insecure in their jobs. A recent survey showed that more than half of Americans who make six figures are now living paycheck to paycheck. It's a tough time for everyone, and we need to be prepared for what's to come. It all looks considerable similar to the 1920s or even the 80s bubble shortly before Japan collapsed. You may have heard of Japan's lost decade, which began around the mid-80s and which still persists to this day. So it is actually already more than three decades of stagflation. So it is not always true that the stock markets recover fast after a crash. Sometimes it can take literally forever as we can see in the Nikkei index which has not made new highs for over 30 years now. By the way, one of the major reasons for the crash in Japan was the same activity that we have witnessed the last couple of years here as well, and that is when companies take out new debt to buy back their own stocks. These stock buyback programs were a major reason that broke Japan's economy back then because stock prices are temporary and they do not create much economic value. So if stocks fall, the money disappears but the debt will remain. Even worse, as companies have used their own stock price as collateral for those loans, it is going to end in massive margin calls and an accelerating downward spiral. Similarly to Japan, the United States has also experienced lost decades, with the most recent one occurring in the year 2000. When we talk about a lost decade, we're talking about a significant amount of time where investors can lose out on a precious commodity that cannot be replaced. And that is time. If you're counting on consistent returns to retire comfortably, a lost decade can set you back significantly. And if it gets bad as it did with Japan, then you might not be around anymore until the markets finally recover. Now the question on everyone's minds is whether we're heading towards another lost decade or something even worse. While I can't predict the future, in my humble opinion, the answer is likely yes, because there is really no way out of this dilemma. The interest on the existing debt has to be paid and with much higher rates, it will be very challenging to say the least to do that. And where should the growth come from to satisfy the requirements for taking on even more debt? Not to forget, our economic system is a Ponzi scheme that constantly requires the issuance of new debt to pay for the interest of the old debt. But where should the growth now come from with these high interest rates? So unfortunately, we can't keep relying on debt to keep the markets going up and up. Interest rates are rising, making it more expensive to service that debt. And quantitative easing, or money printing, is losing its effectiveness with each passing use. Just look at the results from the 3 trillion the US printed in 2020 alone. Not exactly a roaring success, am I right? And if we want to use quantitative easing to get us out of this massive recession that's looming, we're going to need to spend well over 10 trillion dollars or maybe 10 times of that, depending on how many more 100 trillion dollar black holes are out there like the one I mentioned earlier from the Bank of International Settlements. So what does all this mean for the future? Well, it's not looking too bright we're most likely going to be in for a lost decade or a new Great Depression. If the Federal Reserve now pivots and turns on the money printers again, it would cause massive inflation. I mean we already quadrupled the money supply during the health crisis. If we do that again, we will enter hyperinflation with more than double-digit inflation numbers. The unofficial inflation numbers are anyway already there. It is just nasty stuff. So make sure to get your spending habits in order. Pay off your debt as long as you still have a job and try to be as self-sufficient as you can. Investing in stocks will most likely become as unpopular as it was after the dot-com bust in 2000. And the next target for Tesla and Apple is below $50. Going to be a tough ride. Hope you stay tuned and this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and all the best to you.